Hi guys, in this video we're going to do the parachute example using Google Sheets. Um, I'm not going to go through all the conceptual um, explanations that I did. I will simply restate uh, the basic idea, the basic, basic study was that there was a parachute manufacturing company that needed to choose basically between suppliers. There were four suppliers that provided the fabric it needed, the, the property that or the variable that they were interested in testing was the strength, the tensile strength of the fabric. So they ordered um, a, a shipment from each of the four suppliers. Um, and they randomly selected swaths of fabric from each of the suppliers and apply, um, put them through a, a, a machine that measures their tensile strength. A higher number indicates a higher strength fabric. As you're seeing here, this is our data. Okay. And here are the four suppliers. Okay. And here are tensile strength readings for each supplier. Okay. Taken independently and randomly. Okay, so um, as you can see, within each supplier, there was quite some variability uh, with the tensile strength. Okay, so that's something you expect when you uh, study things uh, in the world. Okay, so the hypothesis, remember, was the null hypothesis in the one-way ANOVA, which is the way to tackle a problem like this is that all four suppliers have the same mean tensile strength. So if we want to see if there's a difference among them, among their tensile strengths, among their mean tensile strengths, well we first start out by assuming that there's no difference between among them with respect to their tensile strength. So HO is what we start out assuming, which is that they all have the same tensile strength. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of them, at least one of the suppliers, so at least one inequality, at least one of the suppliers is different than the others. Keyword at least, key phrase at least, that mean, it could mean that they're all different, but it, it only takes one of them to be different for us to reject HO. Okay? And recall that we used alpha of point. Oh, 05. Okay, so this is some, this video definitely requires you to have watched the one we did by hand, which had the full setup of the study, and I just gave you a basic um, quick synapse of, uh, uh, sorry, a su summary of what we um, discussed there. Okay, so I'm going to erase this now. You can always go to that video or go back into, to get this back. All right. I want to show you how to come to that same conclusion, get those same values that you did that we did together by hand using Google Sheets. So first off, here's our data, same data that we had in that example. I've set up a bunch of row uh, names here, and these are things that we need to calculate. So x bar, remember, is x bar. It's the sample mean. So when I write a num value here, this is going to be x bar. 1 from supplier 1, x bar 2, x bar 3. Organize this however you like. I think this is a smart way to do it. Okay? x squared, s caret 2 is s squared. So this will be s squared 1, s squared 2. Remember, sample variance from supplier 3, sample variance from supplier 4, and so on. Okay? X bar bar will go here. C and N dot, just to be clear, there is a dot there. Remember, there was a distinction between these two. S squared underscore pooled, right? This is the underscore pooled or subscript rather pooled. The other guy here, S squared X bar, you get the point. This is the notation. This is the, I'm just telling you why I'm writing it like this. It's a limitation of the text editor. I don't want to spend too much time finding the bars and all that stuff. Okay, and using subscripts and superscripts. All right. So as long as you know what I'm talking about here. Now let's get these actual values. So we're gonna let 
Google Sheets do all the heavy lifting. We just feed it the formula. So if I want the sample mean from supplier one, I do equals average, and I simply highlight all the values from supplier one. Once I've done that, I recognize that number, by the way, from when I did it by hand. I can rewrite that for the next guy, equals average, highlight supplier two. Or I could have just grabbed the bottom right hand corner and dragged it to the right. Okay? So rewind, watch that over if it's too fast for you. Next, I want the sample variances from each of the groups. So equals var. Okay? Now there's a few choices here, so let's be careful here which one we're going to choose. Let's hover over them. We want the sample variance. So var a. Var A gets us the sample variance. And we highlight. Make sure not to highlight the X bar. Hit enter. And just like I dragged before, I don't need to type this over four times. I can just write it once and drag. OK? Next, X bar bar. I can do this two ways. First off, it's an average. I can average all the data. or let me just do it to show you get the same value. I can average the X bars. Because this was a balanced design. And you see I get the same value. So we only need one of those. So C. C is simply how many groups we have. That's our that's just my symbol for that. So four, because there's four suppliers. N is how many observations there is across all the data. So I would basically need to count all this. So you can count it or you could do count and highlight make sure you're just highlighting the data not what we did in row 7 and 8 and you get 20 n dot was how many observations are in one particular group in a balanced design they're all going to have the same number of observations so you can just count one any particular group so just take group 1 supplier 1 there's 5 okay once i have all this i can get s squared pooled S squared X bar, F, F U, remember F U was from the table, okay? So S squared X bar, remember, is the average of the variances. So I can just do average and highlight the variances. Again, if this is too fast, all you do is rewind and watch it over. Okay. S squared X bar is the variance of the X bars. So equals var P, sorry, var A, and I highlight the X bars. Be careful what you're highlighting in these formulas. Okay. And I'm see I'm showing a lot of decimal places. If I don't want to see that, I can come up here and just say reduce or increase. So let's do something like that. Finally, I have what I need to get F. F was, and I'm going to open a parenthesis in the numerator, n dot times, use the asterisk, s squared x bar, just click on it, close parenthesis, divided by, this is exactly the formula, s squared pooled, hit enter. You'll recognize this value. Let me reduce decimal places. Remember, F equals n dot times s squared x bar over s squared pool. This was our formula. Okay, and that's what I did here. Finally, I need f from f u rather upper critical value. Remember that's what the u was from the correct f table. Since I said in the beginning that alpha was 0.05, I can get the degrees of freedom numerator and degrees of freedom denominator so let me do degrees of freedom num degrees of freedom underscore denom alpha okay i need these four things to get go to the f table right to get f u ah. when i do the underscore that indicates that what follows is a subscript right we've already discussed this f degrees of freedom numerator was c 
minus 1. F degrees of freedom denominator was N minus C. So I'm just clicking on the cell references. Look over here. Ah. Look over here. That D is extra. Okay. Or just look over here. B12 minus B11. So I should get 16. Alpha, let me just put in 0.05 because that's what it was. So I pull up my table. We've done this a few times by now. I'm in the correct table. Alpha is 0.05. My numerator degrees of freedom was 3. My denominator degrees of freedom was 16. So I see that 3.24 is my F upper critical value. I'll take that and I'll put that here. And I'm almost ready to make my decision. By the way, if you don't find the degrees of freedom that you need, sometimes if you scroll down, you'll see that um, when you get to these higher values, there becomes some big gaps. Use the next lowest degrees of freedom. So if you have a degrees of freedom denominator of 35, you see there is no 35, so use 30. Use the next lowest, the next lowest, if you don't find the exact one you need. That way you're being conservative. You're being safe with the decision you make. Okay, so 3.24, I just got that straight from the table. Using these components, that's the, these are all the same values, notice, that we got by hand in the previous series. Finally, I can make a decision. I see that F is less than FU, right? Just look at these two values, compare them. So I fail to reject HO. And we talked about what that means in the previous tutorial where we spent a lot more time. That means I fail to reject that all the, pop all the suppliers have the same mean tensile strength. All four suppliers have the same mean tensile strength. I failed to reject that statement, or I accepted that statement. Okay, accepted HO. All right, so so I would have no reason to do a to proceed to do a Tukey Kramer procedure here. All right, I'll be sure to give you an example of what that would look like when you would. So if you were to reject HO, you would go on to do a Tukey Kramer procedure. Here, there's no reason to. I am done. I maybe would put some words to this and conclude, which we did already. What does this mean back in terms of the problem? But uh, that's basically how you do it in Google Sheets. You see it's a lot faster. The first time it's a lot harder, especially calculating these variances and these X bars. It's a lot quicker when you have software. So do it however you please. Um, just be careful. And uh, as long as you learn how to do it once by hand, you at least know what these formulas in Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel and any other software that you use are doing. And that's important, not to just blindly be using formulas. Okay?